Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. I'm finally back home. I'm finally back to maybe doing some videos. And today I thought I would start with my five key takeaways from the one pen, one ink for one month challenge. So here goes. First, let's start with what the challenge consists of. It is one pen. In my case, I chose the Twisby swipe with a medium number five steel nib great pen it's light i was doing long haul travel so light kind of matters about everything and it's just an easy dependable fairly inexpensive to replace pen if something does go wrong which it did not so that's first one pen and then one ink which in my case was diamine majestic blue now normally i would use the bottled variety but in this case I decided to go with cartridges because, again, long-haul travel, uh, three planes in each direction, plus some on-the-road travel once I was in Cambodia. So cartridges were just too simple and too easy, so that's the way I decided to go. And it really was very convenient. It's not one of the big takeaways, but really, cartridges probably the best idea when you are traveling on up and down airplanes, unless you actually want to write on the plane, in which case you'll just have to learn how to fly with an inked fountain pen. I just didn't want to bother. Simple was king in my travel, and so that's what I did. A converter pen, and I wanted one that used international cartridges because I wanted to use that ink. I had settled on that already. It had some nice shading, some nice sheening on the right paper, and I thought that would keep me from getting too bored. So that's what I went with. And of course, the Twisby Swipe, because it is just a good pen, and it fit all of my criteria. Now, is this the pen that I would take next time? Probably not. If I were going on this challenge again, if I'm staying home, uh, well, that, that would influence my decisions. I might go with the big Ranga Splendor for a month because awesomeness, right? Or the pen back behind it from Jim Hines. Either of those pens actually would be a great one month, one pen challenge thing for here at home. <laughs> I didn't want to lose either of those in travel. Next time for travel, I might actually lean toward pocket pen, in which case maybe the Gravitas brass pocket pen would be the best one to take with me. Got to be honest, I carry this pen almost every day when I'm home and when I'm not on this challenge. And I kind of miss that pen. By that I mean a lot. I really enjoy that pen and it has a great nib and it's just, it's too handy. And I, I love that. So that is what I might do differently. But what were my five key takeaways? Well, number one, I mentioned the travel. This is the perfect time to do a challenge like this. When you're going on a trip, all of your other bits of your routine are changing anyway, right? You're in a different place, a different town, different food, different uh, place to stay, all of that. So why not do something different? And it, to me, that just makes it easier. Got rid of the big pack of pens and just took the one fountain pen. I did take a ballpoint pen and a gel pen, a couple of gel pens actually, uh, for when I was working at the school where I was teaching. But for most of my writing at the desk on my trip, it was, of course, the Twisby Swipe. And lots and lots of coffee and espresso. Uh, that that did not change, and I did not limit myself to one kind there. I, I got every bit of espresso I could get on this trip. It helped with the time zone change immensely, I'm sure. Number two, takeaway. What would that be? Well, one pen's enough. You might think, because yeah, I'm somebody who has... A lot of pens, I mean, there's half a dozen and plus two more that I can't do with one pen. Not true. Uh, one pen, it, it really is enough. The rest is uh, gravy. The rest is luxury. Uh, however you want to word that, but one pen really was enough for me. Now, if you are an artist, then you need uh, various nibs and things like that. That might be a little bit tougher, but for someone who is just writing thoughts and classes in my, uh, for my part and a couple of letters while I was there as well back home, then one pen was enough. And most of the time, one pen is really enough. I realize that that means you might watch f fewer reviews, but you know, what am I going to tell you about the truth? One pen 
is enough. Number three, takeaway, and it relates to me saying that next time I might take the pocket pen, is this. Pocket pens are handier. That is why I carry one always, even uh, at times where I have a pen like this in my backpack or laptop bag or wherever, I always have one of these handy. And uh, if I were getting it down to just one pen for all of life, a pocket pen may actually be what I would choose. Yeah, that, that or something like it would probably be it. That would be it. And then that would be all I would have. And do you know what I would be? I'm perfectly happy. I would be fine. The fourth takeaway, really simple one, and I've already hinted at it as well, I didn't get bored. Even though I love all my pens and I love the variety and I like all of these different nibs, and even just in this half dozen, you've got different kinds of nibs. There's the Pilot Custom Heritage 912 there with the FA nib. You've got, uh, I think, the, the clickable Majan A1. That's just kind of fun, and it has an extra fine nib and a medium nib in the Faber-Castell and a vintage nib there with a little bit of flex in the Waterman. And that Scrix, which is what I carried yesterday, just a really nice everyday carry kind of a pen. Yeah, I, I like all of that variety and I like all of that kind of stuff, but I didn't get bored here. And it wasn't, well, I'm on this challenge, so I just have the one pen and the one nib and the one thing. There was none of that. I'm perfectly happy with that. And I don't think that's because I'm any different from you. I think this, it means that in truth, we get more of our excitement from the experience of writing than we do from the actual pen, though Different pens and different nibs do enhance the fun and the joy of writing or drawing or, or sketching or whatever it is that you do with your fountain pens. Uh, but when push comes to shove, the pen's not the point, right? The pen enhances what we're doing, and the pen does bring some excitement and variety and things like that. But the pen is not the point. So did I get bored? No, I didn't get bored. Didn't get bored with the ink either. And I did choose an ink that is more than uh, a little interesting on really good paper anyway. And on cheap paper, I will be honest, on cheap paper, the ink doesn't do all that much. It's just a really pretty blue, and there's lots of really pretty blues, and so could have gone with something plainer. But on good paper, whether it's the Rhodia or a Tomoe, like I had my Hubanichi planner, uh, then it, it brings out that ink's personality, and that's kind of fun. I did not at all get bored. And finally, the last takeaway that I have here is that it served to sort of cleanse my palate. So the one pen, one ink for one month uh, challenge kind of was like ginger on your plate when you are eating sushi. Uh, ginger, I, I don't like, I don't I actually, I don't actually like, like it. <laughs> it's okay, but uh, it cleanses the palate. And so then when you move from one kind to another, uh, you get to enjoy the flavors of the next that much more. And that was true of this, except that I like this a whole lot better than pickled ginger. But having just the one pen and the one ink allowed me to cleanse my palate. And so now that I'm off of my one month, I'm enjoying the other pens I have just a little bit more, the other inks a little bit more. Although, let me say this, this could be a bonus takeaway. I find that I'm not inking things up in a hurry, uh, even more than the three pen challenge. This one has me very slow to go and grab another pen and put another ink in it. And so uh, that cleansing of the palette, and it's almost like a pen fasting, it kind of, you know, slowed me down and has a different, I have a different rhythm now that this is done. And so I think the only pen that I've inked, I think it may have just been one, and that is for a review. I, I just have not felt quite as strong an urge to go grab another pen and another ink real fast out of my collection and uh, and jump to that one before this one's empty. So I think that's a good thing. I think that can be helpful. And I think that's good to do every now and then. But here's my question. If you were doing your one pen, what would you choose? If you were doing your one ink, what would you choose? And if you've done this challenge especially, what insights would you add? Maybe you've got a lot deeper lessons than I've got. What were your observations? And then the last question that I want to ask you is this. What's in your cup? Mine is espresso with a little bit of half and half and just a little bit of sweetener. And it's fantastic. God bless you. Have a great week.